Tonight's Monday Night Raw was all about RK Bro. What up, Ox? Guys, review and reaction of tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw. We're two weeks out from SummerSlam, biggest show of the year. Let's get right into this review. The show started off with the returning Randy Orton, who we hadn't seen in two months. He's coming out giving a really like BS excuse as to why he's been gone. Whatever. Um, here comes Riddle. Obviously, Riddle, super excited to see him. Randy Orton, not so excited to see Riddle. Then you have AJ Styles and Omos. We all know where this is kind of headed in the end, uh, but we got AJ Styles and Omos talking trash back and forth. Randy challenges AJ to a match, so they're going to have the main event match. Uh, it's a solid way to start the show. Uh, I like RK, bro. I think it's a fun a fun little angle that they're doing. And you get AJ versus Randy, a former WrestleMania match. Uh, it's good stuff. Yeah, great way to start the show. Maybe the first time in a long time that I can remember where I was like, oh, this is actually yeah. a great start to the show. And the crowd is hot for RK, bro. Everybody loves it. It's like the, you know, the surprise thing of the summer, basically, over the last few months that's actually worked on Raw, which is not much. So they should really keep going with this and pushing it. And uh, good, good, good way to start it off. And him versus AJ can't really go wrong. I mean, they always have a good match together. Those guys are some of the best of all time. Yeah, in the end, you have, like, uh, you know, Randy trying to hit the RKO on... AJ, he gets out of it, and he tries to hit on Omas, and Omas tosses him to the side. Then you have Riddle trying to get the RKO on Omas, and he gets his ass handed to him. Uh, so, you know, and then Randy Orton is, like, seeing him on the ground. Riddle is like, that wasn't a smart idea, and just kind of walks away from him. So That wasn't a smart move, was it? Randy Orton is to his decision. So uh, he's, later on, he will say he doesn't want to be the partner of riddle anymore riddle is extremely upset by this it's really really sad for him uh but you know that's what it just started off solid way to start the show next thing on the show is jimac tire versus baron corbin who's showing up here from smackdown uh he's still saying he lost now there's a missed opportunity here i think for WWE. he says in a promo baron corbin that he's been he got this opportunity from from jinder mahal who say he might help him out give him some money if he's able to take out drew mcintyre but he said he lost his home uh lost his car lost his wife and his kids uh they left him and then he's been sleeping in the production truck why isn't wwe showing him sleeping in the production truck getting caught sleeping in there missed yeah. opportunity completely missed opportunity the fact that it makes sense why his shirt is wrinkly he doesn't have an iron in there he got mustard on his shirt uh he has to be able to shave he looks, he, he looks like other crap i mean perfectly just do that stuff show him out there sleeping like hey like i don't know, drew just like I, I got this video of you back here and just lay down the, in the thing yeah got a blanket or no blanket whatever just it would have been hilarious but it, it is what it is i don't i guess we can throw him in the hole Fill him in there with, with the with the Drew and mm -hmm. and G G gender feud. I guess we can do that. I guess that's something to do. Maybe add more fuel to, to this kind of feud that's been hasn't really been working or anybody really excited for it. So maybe this helps it. It was a decent segment, nothing too great. I kind of liked them more on 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 SmackDown alone. Kept them over there. It's like you know just with Finn. It's already kind of built there. They had they have they had the little segment a couple weeks ago. They had segment last week. It just kind of made more sense to be on SmackDown for me anyway. Yeah, the match shows what it was. Corbin gets the loss. He gets hit with the, the Claymore kick by Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre gets the win. Uh, he, Drew McIntyre then asked Corbin, how can I help you out? What can I help you with? He said $100,000 would be enough to help him. It's like a ridiculous sum of money. He's obviously not cool with it. Not happening. Uh, but then Jinder Mahal would come out, and obviously they would do the stare down. He would bring out the sword and point it at them. Uh, so it's all headed, you know, McIntyre, Mahal at SummerSlam. But with that being said, I, I got to book Baron Corbin again. He's got a pimp! So let's book Baron Corbin really quickly. All right, so we did this before. I said I wanted him to be like sleeping in back of cars, in people's rental cars, you know, tagging along with them not knowing. They haven't done it. Uh, the production truck, truck uh, stuff, him sleeping there, they should have shown it. Um, I think they need to go a little bit further with the way he looks. Um, I think rather than just the mustard stain, the wrinkly shirt, um, have his boots, his boots be held together by like uh, duct tape. Uh, have like his pants all ripped up. I would say have like him him cut the seam of the back of his pants in a match. Like he rips the back of his pants and then he just uses the same pants over and over again. He always has like his uh, the the cut in the back. Uh, there's a lot of other things they can go with this going forward. Uh, super interesting stuff that they can do. I think he, they should go with him smelling. Uh, some people he might be able to like, get away with that in some matches. Well, Drew kind of threw that out there with the exactly. whole, like, God, for God's sake, take a shower, man. <laughs> yeah, so the whole smelling thing. So play that up in the match. Uh, have him be like, he's so stinky that the guys are kind of doing one. He maybe wins a match like that. Now, what I would want to see at the end of this and maybe work him into like a babyface role or get him really over with the crowd is put him on a trajectory to win matches for money. Uh, 
somebody's gonna offer him money maybe uh vince or a general manager some some type of authority figure is like okay if you win these matches uh we'll give you um prize money and you'll be able to reclaim your fortune or be in okay standing it's a, similar to how rick flair when he was about to retire he had those matches like if you lose you retire and it ended up with Shawn michaels so he had that run of matches uh so you can do the same thing with baron corbin he goes into these matches he has to win he gets on a run they're hard fought matches different stipulations different uh you know circumstances behind the matches you can have him really fight from underneath in these matches and come really close uh, a lot of false finishes and him win these matches and get his sum get his money and leading up to a big pay-per-view where he's able to get the final amount he needs to get over the threshold you can do a graphic on the screen with it uh his face and it, the money keeps piling up and you see like the end goal and you lead it up to a big pay-per-view where he ends up getting the big match win he wins a title maybe the u.s title or intercontinental title and he's able to get his money there uh and and then do it like that i think that might be the funnest way to book a baron corbin yeah, I think right now, like you said, just keep building it up. I think it's fine. It doesn't have to be everything done at once. Like, kind of slowly but surely build him up where his clothes look worse and worse every week. His, his beard is growing out. He looks just, just more and more ragged as, as it keeps going. I think that way people it, – it's a comedy act right now, but I think it's something that people can get behind later on going forward a few months down the road. Just I hope they don't give up on it. I hope they continue going and kind of pushing it and pushing it, like you said, where if he becomes a baby face because the fans are just like – getting behind them organically getting behind them and hopefully that's where it goes like like you i love what, what, what you just said I, I thought that'd be great for him i think it'd be great for for, for the for the show uh, just have another guy and barry core has been around a while and he's kind of been he's been in stuff but he's never felt really that important but this can really push him to something unexpected heights you just never know with with, with these organic storylines like that yeah so wdb you heard it here first book it he's got a hip. All right, so let's get to the rest of Monday Night Raw here. Well, next thing we had was Jeff Hardy versus Karrion Cross. Now, this is Karrion Cross's debut. was a match against Jeff Hardy. He lost the match, and Jeff Hardy had uh, tested positive for COVID, so he was gone for two weeks. Now he's back in the fold. So we had Keith Lee versus Karrion Cross go back and forth 50 50 past two weeks. Now it's Jeff Hardy versus Karrion Cross. Uh, still no Scarlet. He looks weird, uncomfortable coming out by himself, cutting a promo in that aspect, holding like the, the, the hourglass. It looks weird Which, without Scarlet it, not doing it. It just should have been Scarlet holding it, no? She had more she, sense of him she, awkwardly holding it. She <laughs> adds so much to all that stuff the entrance really and stuff like does. that it takes away a ton but the match was better in the first and cross gets the win with the cross jacket he taps him out then he puts it on him again after the match where is this going i have no clue whatsoever how this is going to end up working out what's the plan because he seems like he's going to lose to joe at takeover um and then nxt will be just obliterated after that check out nxt is dead videos coming out soon nxt is dead uh so that's that's what we got here so not much to talk about there it's just it's a match i mean i don't know where it's headed but it was better in the first match uh, next thing on the show, Alexa Bliss versus Dewdrop. Now, Alexa Bliss coming out with Lily. This was a terrible segment. Um, it's still like, even even though Eve Marie's not wrestling or doing anything, she's still bad at what she's doing. Um, yeah, yeah, she's not. She's just, I don't know. Why is she here? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Why is she here, man? I don't know. Like she, like, she threw this punch. And you see the punch outside, and it just looked terrible. And, like, it was like. Like what was, was it? Like I don't like you. You've been in movies. Like you've been in an action movie. Like what was that? It was ah. No, nah, it's, it's really bad stuff. And then in the match, you have uh, Dujop like, kind of taking over the match. Then all of a sudden, Lily's in the corner. Like, she's in the corner the whole time. And then she just, a camera cuts to her, and she winks. And so cheesy and corny. And then, you know, she gets scared. She gets rolled up and loses the match. It's terrible stuff. It's just horrible. Well, like, horrible and stuff. The, and did the live crowd see the wink? No. So, like, it's just everybody probably like, what, what happened? What was going on? So it's just... I don't know. I'm not loving this. Like they they got rid of Bray. There's really no point in Mr. Alexa Bliss anymore. It's just it's not really doing anything. Yeah, it's not really doing anything. But the next thing on the show is Ricochet versus Sheamus. Uh, they're continuing to have issues. Uh, they're having a match, solid match. In the end, he gets the win. Sheamus does, and then here comes Damian Priest to interrupt the cel you know the celebration. They do a face to face. It's headed for SummerSlam. We get the confirmation later on. Uh, so the match was very solid. This will lead to John Morrison versus Damian Priest. Funny thing in this thing, uh, Damian Priest would get the win, and then you would the big reveal is that the Miz is no longer injured and he doesn't need to be in the wheelchair anymore. So he runs off and hauls ass out of there away from Damian Priest. Then you have. You have uh, Sheamus coming out. They do a back and forth on the mic. Priest, Sheamus, Priest challenges Sheamus to the U.S. title match at SummerSlam. Irishman accepts. Yeah, I mean it was a 
run of the mill WWE segment to show that fill a matchup and fill a couple of hours, uh, not a couple hours, but like a, for 45 minutes of, yeah. of, of the middle of the show. And they threw in this match. This is a match for SummerSlam. It's good for Priest. I didn't love the whole bully thing or his promo wasn't anything really special or really didn't feel anything kind of important, but it was what it was. As long as Priest is in a major feud with Sheamus where we can put the belt on him, the U.S. title, and hopefully book him correctly as the U.S. champion. And, you know, we'll see. That's asking for a lot. I know WWE, but whatever. Uh, but at least he's 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 come up from NXT, unlike Keith Lee, and he's actually doing something and being prominent and not losing to Jeff Hardy his first time out or going back and forth with, with Keith Lee. So for the most part, at least they're, they're they're doing Damian Priest pretty okay right now. Yeah, they're doing some okay stuff with them. Then we get some 24/7 sh shenanigans in the back where Akira Tozawa and R Truth are chasing down uh, Reggie. He's flipping around, doing his flippy flippity flip. Uh, we'll see how long. Oh, we'll we'll see how. Mode. Well, yeah, Xbox mode. We'll see yeah. how long it takes for that to get annoying. Shouldn't take super long. I mean, it's kind of fun watching I mean, him flip around, but it's gonna. It's pretty it's, annoying to me now. I don't. Yeah. I don't like it at all. I don't know if you like the flips, whatever. But if let's see how long it takes to get like super annoying to everybody. Next thing in the show, T Bar and Mace sighting. They're taking on T Bar versus Mustafa <laughs> Ali in a one on one with Mace on the outside and Mansoor on the outside. Uh, yeah, it's kind of whatever. I mean, you know. I mean, it sucked. I'm, yeah. I'm not liking any of these two tag teams. Ascension 2.0 is not working for me. I like Ascension 1 better. Uh, Mace just looks super raw and super green and just doesn't... Like, there was one point where they, they're supposed to act tough and he's having, like, a stupid dance going on. Like, what, what, is, what is he doing? Yeah, it's weird stuff. Um, it's weird. And Mustafa Ali and, and uh, Mansoor, I mean... There's nothing there. Let's be I mean, Ali, nothing Ali there. loses clean here, and then you have uh, Mansoor coming in and trying to and fighting off Mace and T-Bar. This is not much, and they don't like they don't recall to Retribution. I don't think I don't I don't mm -hmm. like recall to them being part of Retribution yeah, together. Like, like they had a huge feud, and yeah. they, had, they were together. I mean, no, no, it's just it's bad stuff. It's just it's, it's, just, it's, it's, it's yeah, just it's bad, it's just man. weird. I think it's like Dominic Dajakovic is just a solid guy in a ring. He's just wasted in the spot, and Mansoor and Ali is like you could do it as a tag team, but it's just not really like anything to write home about. But with that being said, we got Nikki A.S.H. versus Rhea Ripley next. And uh, Nikki A.S.H. Uh, is dealing with a lot of injuries after the whole thing she had with Charlotte, the back-to-back -back weeks of fa uh, facing Charlotte. Uh, so she's getting her ass handed to her by uh, aggressive Rhea Ripley, uh, really focusing on the midsection. But in the end, Nikki A.S.H. is on the top rope. And here comes Charlotte, comes out. Here comes, knocks her off. Then it's a disqualification. She keeps oh, yeah. She beats down both, and that's pretty much it. Um, nobody really cares about Nikki A.S.H. right now. The crowd's not really hyped for her, really, to be honest with you. Um, you know, it, she was a little bit cheered last week, but the crowd really wasn't feeling it this week. I, I don't know. I don't think it's going to get over. I think she just loses the title. She's transitional champion. It is what it is. Uh, Charlotte came out. Uh, it's not much fun. Yeah, her promos were just like, ah, no one cares. It's just not feeling it. It's just, it's kind of cringy and cheesy so yeah. just yeah can't really get behind it um Rhea's promo was also really weak like I don't, I don't like her promo just talking random it's like you know she doesn't have what it takes to be you know state champion neither do you girl you mm -hmm. lost your title so sure, what are you what, what are you even talking about um and then Charlotte is just going to win again let's be honest uh she's gonna be just just give it a title just that's it and then we'll figure it out from there it's just nobody really cares Sure, no. Yeah, nobody really cares. Let's we'll just see which one of the two out of Charlotte and Rhea are going to come out champion. Most likely Charlotte. I don't know. Who knows that SummerSlam? But that's what we got. Then after this, we get the big match. AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. And it's a you know it's a good match. It's solid. It's really good stuff. These guys are so good in the ring. They're so good in the ring together. So, so, yeah, it's everything's so... It's like it's just two naturals in the ring. I mean, that's yeah. what it is. Just two guys are just naturally gifted and naturally made for professional wrestling and, you got and, and season vets they got booked yeah. they, they know how to work they want to work the crowd they know how to do everything it's just like yeah. you can't these guys are gonna even on on, on a roll there's commercial breaks and all the schnoziness of raw but still a good match yeah and they have omas outside and randy's really screwing with messing with omas a lot in the end uh but then here comes Riddle. he wasn't supposed to be there because randy didn't want him at ringside he comes mm -hmm. out and helps out uh, and taking out Omos just for a little bit, kind of like, you know, distracting him. And then AJ Styles will go for a phenomenal, for phenomenal forearm, and we got the highlight of the night with this RKO out of nowhere. What a maneuver! Oh, 
So there you go. That RK out of nowhere. That finishes the match. Gets the win for Randy Orton there. So with a little help from Riddle, he gets the win. Then you have Riddle seemingly... Uh, I was I, you know, I tweeted out, it seemed like it was a Mega Powers moment right there. They were going to go for the big handshake, uh, but they went for a little bit of a hug. Randy really reluctant to do so. Uh, you knew what was coming after they started like pointing to the crowd and holding their hands up, and, and Randy yeah. Orton hits him with an RKO. So... <laughs> so that's kind of this team's version of the Mega Powers moment. Hitting hit with RKO is kind of like, yeah, this we're cool, we're a team. So we all know what this is leading to. Next week, will probably get set up AJ Styles, Omos versus RK Bro for those Raw Tag Team titles. And finally get AJ out of the tag team scene, hopefully, after SummerSlam, get him back in the main event picture. Yeah, I thought it was a great segment, great match, like we said. Um, I love the fact that they, you know, the, they faked the hug, they worked the hug, and they played off. And you know, he, he, he can't help himself. He's the Viper, that's yeah. what he does. He, he needs to, he, that's just his move. So he did it, it was good, but it wasn't like one where like, oh, it's not happening. It's even even he was smirking like, you know, you can't trust me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, it is what it is. But, you know, the, this is in the end. Again, this is the match I'm most excited about for SummerSlam, and Omos is in it for crying out loud. So, whatever, I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and I, I'm the most interesting thing on on Raw. Well, it's not even right. close. The crowd's into it. The crowd was like hyped about it. So, just they they, they got me excited. And the, the tag team belts haven't been this interesting in God knows how long. So it's definitely just fun to to have them being interesting. And I, I want to see RK Bro like win it and have a run and just be them it's, it's it should be awesome it should be a fun time and i like the way they play it up of arc you can't trust or he's a viper it's, yeah, it's fun yeah, stuff yeah. um no well you know no keith lee on the show no goldberg on the show we had the you know mvp and lashley promo so whatever uh we'll see where that ends up uh oh, goldberg was supposed to be on raw wasn't he supposed to be on raw i don't know i don't think no him? i think he put it on next no. week's raw he's supposed to be on next week's raw oh, okay, go okay, home okay. yeah okay. uh but guys that's our raw review and reaction i appreciate you guys for tuning into this video uh make sure you check out last week's wrestling report on saturday me and josie chats wrestling our live stream there's a lot of fun make sure you check out the pros and cons of cm punk and daniel bryan aw make sure you check out the problem wwe has with roman reigns video and make sure you stay tuned for the nxt is dead video we appreciate you guys for tuning in if it doesn't work for you bro do not do the job later mark later NXT.